Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Python programming. In this video, you will be introduced to the concept of strings. Strings are an object type in Python used to store textual data. This textual data could be something like, for example, someone's name. It could be an address of a place or it could be something like a word or a sentence. Now, strings in Python are an object type that is actually a subtype of a broader classification of objects called sequences. Sequences are objects in Python which contain components placed one after the other, where each component is given what we call an index, a numeric index. This numeric index identifies the component in the sequence and its position within the sequence. Now since Python is a zero index based language, the first object of any sequence is always index zero. The second is index 1, the third is index 2, and so on. Now let's move on to defining strings. How do we define them? Well, strings are defined using what we call delimiters. And delimiters occur in pairs, an opening and a closing delimiter. In Python, these delimiters are pairs of single or double quotes. So for example, if I were to use single quotes to define a string, I, could, I would do it like this. This is a string, as you can see. This is a string is printed over here. And this is delimited using single quotes. Similarly, if I were to define a string using double quotes, it's as simple as doing this. This is also a, as you can see. Now a valid question arises. What if I wanted to include a single quote within my string? Well, if I tried to, let's see what happens if I try to print a statement with a single quote naturally inside it. So say I'm saying it's my birthday. All right, let's see what happens if I try to print this statement. It says an invalid syntax. And this is because as I had mentioned in Python, single quotes and double quotes are delimiters. So they have a special function in Python and we cannot simply just use them within a string because Python will treat them specially for a special purpose. So what Python will do is it will pair this and this delimiters or single quotes and say, okay, this looks like a string to me. And it's not going to understand the rest of this. And then it'll find a random single quote and it won't find its pair. And it will basically throw us an error because of this. So one way or one workaround to introduce single quotes into a string is simply to delimit our string itself using the other type of delimiter or double quotes. So if I want to include a single quote, I will close my string using double quotes. So if I did this instead of what I had done earlier, this is a perfectly valid and legal way of defining my string. And I could, I would do the opposite if I had to introduce say double quotes within my string. I would use single quotes to close it. So if I were to write a speech statement, she said, I am hungry. All right. I have, I want these two double quotes to essentially show that this is a speech. And I'm going to close the string using single quotes. And this is a valid way of doing it. As you can see, my string has these two double quotes. Now, I had mentioned that strings are sequences. Well, let's describe how are they sequences. So first of all, all sequences in Python are a, a um, it's a, essentially a sequence of smaller objects that form the sequence, right? So let's try to understand like how do, how are strings to be treated as sequences? Some sequences that we will learn later are like lists or tuples. And in all sequences, we can retrieve any particular object or component in that sequence using its index. And how do we use indexes in Python? Well, we enclose a numeric index within square brackets. Now let's see what I'm trying to talk about by this example. Now say I'm storing a particular string called say random within so now my variable name here is test and I'm storing the string random within it. All right. And this is a way of retrieving a particular uh, index from test. I write the variable name and then next to it, I put the square brackets. Now I'm supposed to put um, a numeral within the square brackets to uh, tell Python like what uh, particular index I'm looking for. So let's try zero. Now, as I said, Python is zero index based language. So the zero index essentially means the first part of or the first component of a sequence. So let's see what happens when I ask Python to retrieve the first part of uh, what is stored in test. It gives me the string R. In fact, it's just one character R and it's a string. 
So as you can see, it has given me the first character of this string random, which is R. So what this shows is that this string random is essentially a collection or a sequence of one character strings. So this is, so random is essentially a collection of the string R, the string A, the string N, and so on together combined to form the whole string that we call random. Similarly, if I wanted the character at the third position of this thing, I would use, well, since it's the third position and since we're working in Python, I would use the index too. And it should give me the letter N. As you can see, it's given me the letter N. So this is how we can show that uh, strings are also sequences in Python. Well, now let's move on to um, certain string operations and functions that we can perform. Well, as you have seen already, that we can retrieve any particular character within a um, within a string using numeric indexes. Well, what if we want to know what index is a particular character at? And we can do it like this. We use the index function. So let's say my test, and I want to know where or what position the character D is in my string random. So this is how I would use the index function. Index, and within the index, say I'm looking for the character D, and now I it should give me the answer 0, 1, 2. It should give me the answer 3. So if I execute this, it gives me the index 3. So this is uh, the index function that we can use for our strings. Now, what if we want to um, say slice a string into a into its uh, into a smaller part? We want to slice it, and we want to retrieve only that particular slice. Well, here is an example. Say I'm going to I'm going to use the same string called uh, random, and it's stored in test, right? So let's so one way of uh, so the way of doing this is like this. Now let's see what this let's just see what this does first. As you can see, it's given me a and d. And if I went to my string random, a and d is this particular slice. Now let's try to understand what I have done by entering one colon four. Well, what this has done is it's retrieved a slice from the first position. Uh, the first index, which is the character A, up until the fourth position, which is the character O, but it has not included O. So it's very important. When I index like this, every, every time I put something to the right of this colon, I am not including this itself. All right. So it's essentially one, when I say, uh, one colon four, what I'm telling Python is give me the first, the second, and the third character, but not the fourth one. So it's given me A, N, and D. And it's, that's, this is how we do a slicing operation in Python. Similarly, if I were to say slice from the first, if I wanted only the first and the second character, I would do, this is what I would do. If I wanted the first and the second character, I would do one, two, three. So this way it says Python that I want the first, I want the second, but not the third of, so as you can see, I get A and N. Now, so this is a basic slicing. What if I wanted the portion of a string from a particular point all the way to the right or all the way to the left? Well, let's consider the example of where I want the portion of the string random from the say fourth character until the left. Well, the way I would do this is test. Now, since I want it all the way to the left, I don't enter any index to the left of my colon sign. And since I want everything to the left of the fourth character, I enter four here. So as you can see, it gives me A, R, A, N, D, which is everything from the fourth character of my string random to the left. Similarly, if I wanted something to the right of it, I would just do it like this. I would enter some index here and I would leave the portion to the right of the colon blank. So this will give me everything, including the third character, since this is how we treat the uh, indexing in Python, everything including the third character all the way to the right. So this is DOM, as you can see. Now another perfectly valid um, slicing is, say I want to slice or take out uh, different characters from the string, but I want to skip certain characters. Like I want this one, then I want to skip one, and I want to take the next one, and then I want to skip one. Well, in that case, we have to introduce a step. So one way of doing this is, now how do we read this? So as you can see, I've written zero colon six colon two. So what this is telling Python is, I want every character from my string test, uh, starting from the zeroth character up until the sixth, but not including the sixth, after skipping 
or taking two at a time. Taking two at a time can also be assumed as uh, skipping one at each step or skipping one character at each step. So what this will do is it will go to random. It will take the zeroth one. It will take R and then it will skip the next one. So it will not consider A and then it will pick N and then it will not consider D and then it will consider O up until the sixth character, whichever that may, whichever that may be. And if you see the output, it gives us R N O, which is exactly what we wanted. We wanted R, we wanted N, we wanted O, where we skipped uh, A and D, or we skipped the every second character essentially. So this is a way of um, slicing strings while also skipping certain characters or skipping characters and steps. Now Python is also an in, uh, there's another interesting technique that we can use in Python to uh, where we can start retrieving characters from the rightmost side of uh, a sequence or a string. Uh, we can use negative indexes. So if I were to, for example, show you, let's see what this, what this gives me. Test, what, what is a minus one index? It gives me the character M. Now remember a string is random. So minus one gave us the last character of the string uh, random, which was M. So this is a way of using negative indexes. And similarly, if I used test minus two, it would give me the second last character, which should be the character O, as you can see here. Now there are some other important functions that uh, you may use in Python. So for that, let's create another, let's create another string. Let's call it upper, lower, all right. And I'm storing it again in the same variable test. Uh, let's see what happens when I use the upper function and what happens when I use the lower function. Now I'm going to use the lower function for this. So these two functions will respectively give us, or give us the result or give us our string in uppercase and lowercase respectively. So as you can see, the upper function created the first string in full uppercase and the second one created this uh, this string in full lowercase. Now another important and probably one of the most important methods that we use for strings, especially when it comes to data science is the split function. So let's see what I mean by the split function. Let me create another string. Let's call it hello world. All right. And I'm going to use a split function and I'm going to see what happens when I use this function essentially. So what I'm doing in these in this these three lines is I'm creating the string hello world. I am storing it in test and then I am using the split function on the test and whatever result I get I'm storing another variable called sliced and then I'm just going to show you what is in sliced. As you can see what's happened to the string hello world is that I have broken it into its components or its component words if that makes any sense into hello and world and I've stored both of these into what we call a list. Now you might ask, well, how does Python know that it has to separate at a blank space? Well, the split function by default will uh, break up a string at its blank spaces. But if we wanted, we could break it up using or add every comma. So for example, if I wrote hello world using comma and if I put a comma inside over here and now if I try to execute this, like for example, uh, I'm going to find, I'm going to look for commas in the string and then I'm going to try to sp split it. As you can see, there's no splitting happening. I have one list with my original string itself because it's not found a comma. What if I introduced a comma over here? Now let's see what happens. As you can see, the splitting has happened. It's found this comma and it's caused a split between hello and world. Similarly, if I, in my string, if I put a comma again and I put something else, it should give me the split over there again. So we can define our split using some whatever we put in between these uh, circle brackets after the split function. It's just important to note that by default, if in case we do not enter anything over here, it will use blank spaces to do the splitting. Uh, another very important operation and very common operation in strings is what we call concatenation. So if I have two strings first and say another string second, and I want to join these together, well, the operator I would use to do this is called the plus symbol. This is the concatenating operator when it comes to strings. So what is the result of this? Let's see. Let's print this out. Let's print this whole thing. And let's see what is the result. As you can see, what uh, this has done is it has combined the first string first and the string second into one string called first second. So this is the concatenate concatenation operator. Now finally, uh, the last topic in this lesson is the topic of escape sequences. Now escape sequences are special commands that tell Python to either suppress special meaning of some character or symbol in a string 
or give or give the special or give some special meaning to an otherwise ordinary character um, in a string. So let's look at the first example. Now remember my in my for earlier in this video where I was I was telling you like uh, what what is the way of writing or how do we introduce single quotes or double quotes into a string? And I had told you the trick. If I want to use a single quote in my string, uh, I just close it using double quotes. Or if I want to use a double quote, I close it using single. Well, another way of doing this is using what we call an escape sequence. And an escape sequence in Python is the backslash character. All right. So let's see what happens when I use the backslash character where I want to introduce my single quote. So if I use my previous example where I wanted to introduce a single quote and say uh, I'm going to close it using single quotes as, uh, uh, as well. So I'm going to go back to my error example so as to speak. Now this would throw me an error, right? As you can see, it has thrown me an error. So what if I used the escape sequence that I mentioned? The escape sequence is just backslash character. Now this is the point of the string where I want my, my single quote. So I introduce a backslash. Now I have my single quote. And I continue writing the rest of my statement. Let's close the string. Now will this work? As you can see, this has worked. So what this has done is this backslash character has told Python um, to not treat this uh, special character or the single quote to not treat it specially and let it be as a part of the string. So as you can see, that's what's happened here. Now the next case or the other uh, use case of escape sequences is when we want to give a particular character that is otherwise just ordinary some special meaning. So um, let's take the example of the character T and the character N. We use the character T to introduce tab space um, and we use the character N to introduce what we call line break. Well, let's see by an example. So normally the character T has no special function. So the character T within a string will just uh, be outputted as the character T itself. However, as you can see here, I'm going to introduce a backslash before this character T. Let's see what it does. It introduces this thing that we call a tab space, which is a larger than normal space. Similarly, if I were to use the uh, backslash N combination, this would introduce what we call a line break. And if you were to see the output of this, you can see at the point of the string where I have this combination of backslash N, a line break has occurred. So uh, there are plenty of other escape sequences that you may choose to learn. And uh, these are just two of the probably the most common ones that I used. So yeah, this was an introduction into strings in Python. In case you enjoyed this video, do give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And once again, thank you for watching.